Hi, and thanks for tuning in to this week's vlog, where we will focus on our family and consumer science classes and the extension of that program through our FCCLA extracurricular offering. Sappo, and Mrs. Sappo, can you just give us an idea of your main philosophy of family consumer sciences? Well, we're very fortunate in this school system that there is support for family and consumer sciences. Um, the goal, overall goal of it is to improve the quality of life for all students that we teach. And we teach life skills. That's our, our bag. We have life skills in every class that I teach. And as we were talking before we started our interview, um, so much of what you do is practical and, and things they're going to be able to use. Uh, in their everyday life. Exactly. We have um, <clears throat> rotation that hits 6th grade, 7th grade, and 8th grade, two um, sections of each of those. And through those, I give them a little taste of those curriculum items that are important that we follow up on in the upper level classes. So in our ninth grade classes, or I shouldn't say ninth grade because we do have a lot of returning students that didn't get that freshman, or, you know, the, the facts one class that's all right. year long. And so that really focuses on the textile part of it, the nutrition and food part of it, the design part of it, and child care. So the four big topics there and peppered along with other health issues and whatever else that I have that, that in the bag of tricks. Perfect. But FACTS 2 is a build on that and that's usually a semester class. So the FACTS 2 does more of um, advanced foods items. They sew a little bit harder project when we do our textiles unit and then we um, try to do a field trip to a daycare or a um, some kind of a, a child care facility that kind of tells about careers and things that they can choose as the career goes along. Perfect. So, um, and then we have, we offer our family living class. Um, the family living class is required for graduation at Mayport CG and everyone rolls their eyes when I say you have to take the baby home. <laughs> so we have mechanical babies that are ready to go. It's one night, one night of your life that you have to be responsible for another human being. Not really a human being, but a mechanical type that um, has needs and cries in intervals and um, there's a recording type of a, a paper that they have to write after that. So I haven't had anybody die yet that mm -hmm. has the baby, which is wonderful because it's a successful thing. And actually, the kids kind of roll their eyes, but they kind of like it. I think, I they, think they do. You know, and I hear from a lot of our students as they're coming back the next day right. or, at, or leaving. Um, and, you know, it's fun to see. And when they're even at events where yeah, they have to they make take it with. <laughs> decisions and make that that baby has to become a priority right, for them right. in, during that event. So I think it's eye-opening for yes, a lot of them. Yes, it is. It is. And probably for the parents too that, that are, you yeah. know, trying to help babysit and they're doing it wrong or they're yeah. <laughs> whatever. And it's a great, it's just a great learning, a reality and, thing. And what them. a great way for them to connect with their parents yes. and, and right. uh, have some conversations that, yep. you know, it's a conversation starter for for a lot of families too, I think. That's which is right. Great. That's great. We we try to in family living to do all sorts of things. I have peppered my well tried to change it a little bit to the customer. Um, I heard some kids say that they didn't really have a thorough personal finance um, background for families. It's more business, which is important too, right. but the family aspect of that. So we go through a little bit of that. We go through um, housing, finding finding um, our, our uh, housing, like whether they want to have an apartment, whether they can afford a house, whether they can rent or, you know, whatever in the housing market. We talk about setting up a household. What types of things do you need? What things are included in the rent? What are, what's left out? What do you have to pay for yourself? And the whole financial picture is really kind of scary for them. They have a, a tough time with that, seeing that that is an important Well, part. but what a great practical application yeah. for, for school and for kids to be able to get a, a taste of that 
before they have to make those exactly. tough de decisions on their own. So. Yeah, it's a practice thing. And Great. then we talk about nutrition. We talk about, we do our famous ramen cook-off, which is, I know um, many teachers are involved in helping us judge that. And it's sort of an end of the class period. So they clean out the fridge and we, <laughs> we use what we have, which is pretty much real life sometimes too. Right. It's a, that practical part. So they have a fun time with that. Um, we also have types of families. There are thousands of types of families, and everyone is right for that person. So yeah. I kind of encourage that, too, when we sort of talk about that. We talk about reproduction. We talk about the whole system of, you know, sexual, the coupling, the relationships, kind of going through that relationship thing with coupling, marriage, um, you know, sometimes there's a breakup, so we talk about that. We talk about crisis in families, that maybe there's a death or a change of, of patterns. Um, we talk about elderly, we talk about them as elderly people, and all the while, they're a member of their family now, but they will be the head of the family later. So they look back and they look ahead to kind of see. Um, personal mission statements, goal statements, um, career, exploration a little bit too in that family living class and like I said before it's required for each student so that I know they're getting <laughs> I feel right. I feel good about pressing that on and passing it on that they get that, that. what a great way to try to prepare them for whatever yeah. life and career path they they choose but to get them ready for life outside of, of yeah, schools exactly. for certainly right right and then we have our elective classes too that I offer, um, a child development class, a food and nutrition prep class, and I can't even think of the other one. But it, those, those ones are electives, they're semester classes, and they have, um, you know, you get deeper into those types of classes so that it's a little more challenging for the, the upper level kids to take. Yeah, it's great to see that building process. Yeah. The, you have an opportunity to kind of recruit the kids and get them a little taste in middle school right. and then as to see that that progress and um, the number of kids that really gravitate to the classes yep. and and right. really appreciate what's happening there so yeah well i want to thank mrs sapo for all she does in the family and consumer science classroom and also for the extracurricular offering fccla now we'll take a closer look at that program with josh muller I'm here with District 8 FCCLA President Josh Muller, our very own Josh Muller. Josh, thanks for coming on the vlog with us today. Thank you for having me. Can you tell us a little bit about your role as um, District President? Well, my role as District President, uh, it consists of, it started last year at the district meeting uh, when I was elected and I conducted the closing ceremony there and then in, I guess, for lack of a better term, the off season of FCCLA when we don't have any meetings or whatnot going on. It's my job to uh, to think of ideas and get things started for next year. Um, this summer, I went to the National Leadership Conference in San Diego, and there I got some really cool ideas to bring back to the district this year. But we just recently had, well, before we had our district planning meeting, which was quite recently, we uh, did something that has, to my knowledge, never been done before, at least in our district, is we had a district officer and advisor meet and greet here at the school. And that's something that, that's one of my duties that was not directly expressed of me, but it, I took the initiative to do something like that. And it's just so that when we got to the district planning meeting, it went a lot smoother, which conducting the district planning meeting is another one of my duties. And I feel that it really, it really went well. Um, another one of my duties is I conduct the district leadership meeting, which will be held in November in Fargo. Um, I do the opening ceremony and I help with everything that goes on in the meeting. And then when it comes to the closing ceremony, the new president will take over. Great. So it sounds like a lot of leadership and main, mainly getting things going, getting people familiar with one another. And um, so it, that, that district presidency is a, is a big role for you. How does that, um, that responsibility either play into or, or maybe help your local chapter? 
Well, along with being the district president, I am also the chapter president for Mayport CG this year. And so a lot of the responsibilities are the same, just on a smaller level. Um, for our chapter, I'm in charge of um, planning the meetings that we have each month and getting an agenda ready and whatnot. Um, I, I really just, I'm there to make sure that everything stays in order to bring up ideas and to to provide leadership, basically. That's, Perfect, yeah. That's it. Sounds great. So what are some of the plans or things you'd like to see our local chapter, chapter accomplish this year? Well, there's one thing, uh, there's really two things that I really want to uh, accomplish this year with FCCLA. And that is to deal more with our elderly and more with our small children because fa Family Career and Community Leaders of America or FCCLA is founded on the principle that family is the basic unit of society. And that's all well and good when you're talking about the nuclear family, like mom, dad, and you. But no one ever really pays attention to the little kids or the elderly, the grandparents and whatnot. So. We actually already have something planned to, uh, we are doing a dinner up at the Luther Memorial Home and we're in the works of coming up with something to to include the the younger, the younger kids. It sounds like some great goals and, and a great way to maybe build some of your projects that you have. Definitely. Sounds like a great year for FCCLA. We want to congratulate Josh Moeller on his presidency. And we also want to thank all the efforts of our, all of our FCCLA members, as well as their advisors, Monica Hansen and Nancy Sappo. Well, that's it for this week's vlog. Tune in next week as we take a closer look at some of the science offerings that we have here at Mayport CG.